This is Twit. Bandwidth for Know How is brought to you by Cashfly. Today on Know How, let's solder. Finishing the steampunk goggles, version 2. Welcome to Know How. Hey. It's the Twitch show where we build, bend, break, and upgrade. I am Father Robert Ballas here. And I'm Brian Burnett. And for the next few minutes, we're going to be uh, fusing your no-hole with our knowledge. knowledge. Yes. Actually, I'm Gee. kind of impressed we did it as well as we did. I know, right? Just practicing, which we did horrible. many times. Oh. Yeah, no, it was pretty bad. <laughs> Go figure. Well, folks, uh, last week, we uh, we started the Let's Solder with the Steampunk Goggles, and we, we wanted to finish it off. Now, uh, <laughs> Brian... Uh, I, I spent a little bit of time just making sure my connections were right, and I wrapped a few things if you look oh, at my, right, uh, my camera. Right. So this is this is ready for me to solder everything together. Nice. Uh, I'm assuming you did the same thing for yours, right? Well, if you take a close look at my goggles, I did, <laughs> I did none of that. Okay, Padre, I'm sorry. I got distracted. That's fine. No, hey, you know what? You have a corgi to take care of, and that's a, that's a serious responsibility. He requires my full attention. He does. When right? I'm not doing this show, I'm playing with my corgi. All right, let's let's go ahead and dive in. This is just you know just fun time for us to, to be messing around. What I want to do is let's do something together. Sure. Uh, the loop. So this loop. this is actually an important part of the steampunk look. Mm -hmm. uh, mo most goggles have some sort of loop, and and believe it or not, in the first version of the steampunk goggles. The loop was completely ornamental. It, it did nothing but get in the way. But this, this loop, this actually works. This uh, works really well. I've, I've been able to you use this for soldering. Yeah. So what I'll do is, I you can remove these. So this is a. Uh, if you look to the side here, Alex, if you uh, these these are held in by these little screws. You you can remove the screws and pull the lens free. Hmm. And I use it to to check to see if like I'm bridging. It, when I'm soldering oh, something very small. Clever, Look clever. But as far actually, as- Actually, wait, go, go back to that shot. So you can see it. See how it's magnifying Ooh. that? And actually, if I do this, super magnified. My goodness. But as far as this Stars. project, they're ornamental, right? Well, 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 that's the thing. They're ornamental, but they're not. They actually do work. Where I've where I designed the frame- <laughs> where you, Will you wear your steampunk goggles while soldering and use these? Shut up. You would. I you totally would. could. You totally I could. could. The fact that you can is nice. Yeah. Right, right. All right, so what we need is, of course, we need the loop, mm -hmm. and then we're also going to need this. Uh, I, I learned this the hard way. With all the travel and with the, the, the goggles knocking around, these things get loosened very easily, and mm. you always end up having to retighten the loop. This is the same stuff that we used when we were building quadcopters. Is that Loctite? It's Loctite blue. Nice. So this will not let it rotate or just vibrate free. I mean, okay. you can crack it open, but... But this right. one, this if you're using solid. Loctite red, that's when that, that like you never fuses it. Remove it, it ever. Yeah. Done. Yeah. You'll break the metal before you break the bond. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what we want to do, and again, if you go to the side view here, this is designed to clip on. So I mean, I I could do something like lame, that. super lame. Oh my gosh, look at that. Okay, <laughs> but instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and remove this, so I can take the clip off because the frame has been designed to just take this entire assembly. So that ah. entire assembly will fit into my frame and then I can lock it on the inside with uh, with Loctite. Very cool. Okay, so then and then we, you're going to get that look. Yeah, the, the look. The look. The look, Brian. The yeah. iconic steampunk goggle look. Uh, when you do this, when you pull it free, the clip is actually going to snap off and you're going to you're going to have a little spring. Oh, it's, yep. it's okay. Just throw oh, those away. We don't it need like them. instantly collapsed. There we go. All right, so now what you want to do is you're going to go ahead and uh, take a little bit of Loctite blue. Mm -hmm. You're going to just rub it kind of generously. You don't need a big old glob. You just need a little bit on the threads. Mm -hmm. And what that's going to allow me to do is when I when I lock this into place, that little nut is going to stay there. It should hold it. Right. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to pre-spread it. So I'm going to put this on. <laughs> oh, 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 there we go. I see. So you're going to put the, or I, the nut on there. Or I could lose it. There go. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm putting the nut on just so that the uh, the Loctite blue gets spread onto the... My goodness, why am I having this? Because how long do you have until it sets? Oh, uh, while, right? Yeah, you've got some time. Yeah. Several minutes. So don't even worry about that. And then I'm going to take it back off. 
And now, Brian, you got to watch this because you got to do the same thing on yours. Almost lost your nut there. If you take the left side, notice how it has that little hole. Yeah. You just take this, <gasps> push it in. You got the spring there you still the spring for there, tension. The tension. And on the inside of this frame, see how it pokes through? Yes. So this is going to take a little bit of finesse. You got to take this, and I would suggest using a pair of pliers. Psh, amateurs use pliers. Amateurs do. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put it over the top here, like so, and then I'm going to screw it in from this side. It's gonna take a. It's gonna take a while. This is not the easiest thing to do. Yeah, definitely not the easiest thing to do. Considering I'm done. What? I just need like a pair of pliers to really tighten it down. But oh, all man. good. Really? <laughs> I dislike you. It's my piano fingers, Padre. My <sighs> tiny hands. Okay, you know what? <laughs> Hold on. Here, you take. Hey, focus on Brian. Because Brian's doing better than I am. You take that. I'm gonna I'm gonna do take this with my pliers fingers. And tighten them down. Yeah, I don't I don't actually don't like getting the blue on my fingers. Oh, should I not have done well, that? That's okay. I mean, you weren't gonna have kids. Right? <laughs> that's true. I only have a corgi. That's already kid enough for me. Corgi, 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 rocking cool. everywhere. Everywhere. And so once you have enough tension too, it should hold these go. up right. Yeah. And if you want to be really good about it, you can actually put blue on the other side as well. Mm -hmm. Once you have it tensioned down. Totally. Yeah, I think, let's see, I'll push a little more on here. And I'm going to use this other set of pliers. How much was this? The little magnifying glasses? That's They're like pretty seven cheap, right? bucks. Yeah. yeah. They actually work really well. I mean, if, if you... <laughs> They're not just ornamental. They actually do work. If, if, you, if you have a pair of glasses and you'd like to use them to, mm -hmm. to, to look at things as you're soldering them, this is not bad because it moves in and out of position very easily. Yeah. I guess if you didn't use the tint lens and you wanted to be kind of use these as safety goggles while you soldered, you could. You could. Right. And what, so th what this will allow me to do is the tighter I make this, mm -hmm. the easier it will be to hold these in position when I, when I finally uh, start using them. Cool. Uh, uh, do remember this, though. You don't want too much sticking out of, uh, of the top here mm -hmm. because that's where the battery cart is going to go, and you don't want it poking a hole in your batteries. Ooh, that'd no, that would be bad. And so check this out. See? So it's going to fit over my eyes like so, and now I can move this into and out of position. Very cool. I like it. Yeah. And I guess you could take off one or two if you want and... Kind of mix and match if you don't want three. Precisely. But, I mean, why wouldn't you want three, Brian? Uh, pff, actually, I want four now. Or maybe so six. Much, so much cooler. It looks better that way. Yeah. All right. So that's the loop. Uh, now, we need to test the Arduino. What you don't want to have happen is you don't want to get to the final stage of integration. And <laughs> Where realize, you've already put everything together and then, oh, it's not working. It's not working. Mm -hmm. right, yeah. uh, so what we did yesterday, and this is what you still have to do, I've got my potentiometer. I've got my three wires. If you go to the side view, I've got my three wires coming out. So I've got my ground, I've got my five volt, and then I've got my signal line from the wiper coming out of my potentiometer. Mm -hmm. They are soldered in to my Arduino. So I've got ground going into the ground on the high side. Ground I've ground. got five volts going into the five volt pin on the low side. Mm -hmm. And then I've got my white wire, which is my signal wire. Mm -hmm. That's going into A7. A7. Right. Okay. So if I did this right... <laughs> If, 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 if I did this right, um, this potentiometer should, because I've already preloaded the code on mm -hmm. my Arduino, it should allow me to change the animation pattern just by turning my, uh, my potentiometer. Okay. And the Arduino goes into the left housing or the right? Into the right housing. housing. So, right housing. yeah. So the cart looks like this, remember? Right. It and looks, then we'll it's got the little notch there. So this will allow me to do... That it's not ready to go in because I still have to solder in the LED rings. Mm -hmm. But let's see if I can do a little something, something while you work on that. So okay. uh, go ahead and be busy. make sure you're soldering. I'm going to do this. I've got this uh, a secondary large WS2812 LED ring here. I'm going to just very loosely connect these to the pins that I'm using to do my signal out. So in this particular case, let's see what I, I should have used the proper colors. Uh, my ground is orange and my 5 volt is yellow. Uh, and then it changes color again here. Mm -hmm. So my ground is orange, which is purple. So purple is ground. Purple is ground. Like that. It's going to go into the ground pin of my, uh, my Arduino. 
And yellow is five volts and yellow goes to blue. So blue needs to get five volts like so five, for my DIN. Oh, uh, what, what is, wait, orange is purple. <laughs> Which wire do you well, cut? Well, that's not a breadboard, so they just keep popping out. Yeah. That's uh, not great. Hold on. Wait. Ground, ground, ground. There we go. Ground. And then my signal wire, which is green or gray, mm -hmm. I'm going to put it into D3 because that's where I, I put it on my code. So theoretically, if I can get these things to stay where they're supposed to be, if I give power to my Arduino via the USB port, okay, so that's got power. And now this ring, as I turn my potentiometer, uh, should do nothing because I don't have it hooked up to the right pins. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just as you Hold expected. On, uh, blue is ground. Oh, whoa, wow. I may have flipped power. Oh, that's never a problem, no. right? No, uh, that doesn't cause blue smoke at all. <laughs> What's that smell? Stop. Are you cooking chicken don't, over don't there even, again, don't Alex? Don't joke about that. Hmm. He's got something in the oven. Wait, 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 wait. There we go. And then D3, is it? Could have sworn. I th think it's D3. Maybe. D3. Bishop to D3. Uh, so uh, I might have actually just cooked this. <laughs> well, Padre. What do you got over there, Brian? I've got another Arduino. No, my Arduino is fine. I may have cooked oh, okay. the LED ring. Oh, uh, okay. Never mind. Orange. See, this is why you should use standard colors whenever you do this. <laughs> uh, wait, what, what, I, what the orange is ground, purple, orange goes to purple, okay. and okay, so <laughs> I'm, let me talk to myself again. Even the pros make mistakes. I'm, pro, who's the pro here? Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm trying to make you feel better. <laughs> Jeez, hold on. Oh, oh, there we go. Yeah. Yeah, this got really hot, so I shorted something. <laughs> huh. You know, I'm having flashbacks to when I was. At your parents' place in Vegas, and I yeah, that a, was different though. You put twelve volts through a five volt uh, circuit. That's uh, they're that's not supposed not, to get that hot. No, right? no, they they don't. Yeah, I I may have you just cooked it? I cooked the LED ring. At least you're not missing the nut. I'm missing the nut that I'm supposed to use for my potentiometer. What? How did I lose that? Oh no, oh, the one that I that. screwed down there. Uh, I can probably I can. No, find you know what? Here, uh, open up that 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 uh, box in front of you. No, yeah. That one. Yeah, yeah that's got oh, some okay. extra potentiometers in there. Just take the nut off of that. Okay, thank you. Because you know what? It's not like I need that for another project, Ryan. <laughs> so just help yourself. Right. You might need a new uh, LED strip. Well, though. I want to make it work, Ryan. It's too late. It's too far gone. Actually, uh, you know what I could do with the code? I could just modify the code so that it. Yeah. Let's do this. <laughs> that it repairs the LEDs. Serial monitor. No, I killed it. Aww. Wow, I that's pretty good. Could happen to anyone, Padre. I did that real good. It's okay. Uh, mistakes happen. Not for me, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Not for me. <laughs> Your project's bad and you should feel bad. Actually, you know what? Actually, I just realized I may have put the wrong Arduino into my gig bag. Let me reload the code here. Okay. Well, you might get lucky there, huh? Okay, and, and, and. <laughs> okay, so of truth. While, while this is working, I want to address something that's very important to the Know How audience, Brian. What's that? Uh, the fact that you have not yet watched The Expanse. What is that about? <laughs> um, well, you know what? I never finished Battlestar Galactica either, which you used it Wait, as a comparison. what? Well, it was all on Netflix. I thought I had time, and there's like 50 episodes a season. I don't even know you. I know anymore. the gist of it. I got to the part where Boomer, there's like a bunch of different Boomers. Yeah, that's like episode two. Okay, I got No, no, I got that's like far. episode six, man. In season one. Oh. Well, the expanse is pretty good though, right? You disappoint me. <laughs> oh, my thought, nerd cred. I thought we were cool, man. Uh, it just It's one more thing for me to appreciate, right? I have mm. I have time. I would have watched it, but I was too busy not working on this project. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, I may have just blue smoked my thing, but at least I put the time you had into time. blue smoking the thing. Yeah, I know. All right. So The Expanse is on my list. Probably should watch um, Stargate. Uh, what is it? Atlantis. Is that a good one? I like the Stargate series, but I mean, you you cannot put Stargate in the same 
category as Expanse and Battlestar Galactica. Okay, I, I like okay. it very much. I, I enjoy it. It's my yeah. guilty pleasure, but it's not the same. It's not the same. Okay. It's not the same. What's so great about the Expanse? Um, uh, the, the physics. I love the physics. They actually, they, they do not treat the audience like idiots. So they assume <laughs> that you actually understand why the physics work the way they work. Okay. Okay. There we go. Ah, ah, I brought it back. So what? the code, uh, uh, which I, here. Uh, let me, so oh, you I totally can do it this way. Just point it at the camera. See? Huh? Huh? See, that, see the values? That see the values? Oh, I, there's values. Yeah, I, I, Is that I, the, the potentiometer? Turn the potentiometer. Look at that. They change. Very cool. Until I, there we go. Huh? Huh? Uh, huh? So it's working, which means I should... Not bad. Theoretically, I should be able to now <laughs> plug Nothing in this uh, LED ring, uh, and assuming I didn't, I don't smoke it. Okay, remember this: orange is ground. You okay? don't have to smoke everything, you know. <laughs> I do. It was four twenty. <laughs> orange is ground, so orange is yeah. purple. So purple is ground, and blue is five volts. Okay. Remember that. What was it again? Purple is ground and red and blue is five You are a bad volts. person. <laughs> <laughs> you thought about doing it for a second. Uh, I was like, no, that might really screw him up. Oh, God, I just touched something I wasn't supposed to touch. Oh. You know, what? I think I know why they suggest you not, not do this. Why is this, that? This is a very good way to blow things out. Yeah, but it's just... It's just you who's putting your life on the line, right? It's not my life. It's my Arduino's life. Oh, okay. But, you know, Brian... If it was a life or death situation, it would be me doing that. Or you would have me doing that. Precisely. Right? So, do the gear... Uh, never mind. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. What? Uh, well, so I've got my potentiometer. I've got the nut and the washer. Did you use the washer when you were attaching it? No, no don't use the washer because it, okay. it makes it too thick. Okay. And then you put the gear on first, right? And then the nut? Uh, correct. Okay. Yeah, you, you, you want that nut to hold the gear into place. No, okay. I really blew out this ring. I might do that later because, uh, I have to Dremel my rings out. What? Or I have to Dremel my little gear out, right? To fit over the potentiometer. Uh, you don't have the Dremel today. No, I don't. We did not, we did not bring it. Uh, no. Yeah. So I'll just do that. That's an aesthetic thing. So okay. I'll do that later. All right. Now, the other thing that you're going to want to do at this point is, um, so when you start doing system checks, and hopefully you do them better than I did, because I oh, I think I actually did kill the Arduino this time. Oh, no. I touched the uh, power line to the processor. Oh, no. <sighs> I don't think you're supposed to do that. Murderer. I, I, I did Murderer. Did How could you be so cruel? Yeah, it's not responding at all anymore. I did that. Oh, Padre. I know. I am a bad person. Okay. <laughs> I thought I was wondering what that little scream was. Ah, no! Yeah, that was the Arduino going. Uh, what are you doing, bro? Please don't do that. You're killing me. Oh man! And all this time I spent. Oh wait, what? It responded. <gasps> okay, so uh, I'm life. not gonna try to hook up that LED ring again because I think I I did almost kill it last time. All right, so what we've got is we've got. Uh, I, I know that my Arduino is responding. I know that it's sending me values, which means I know it should theoretically. Once I enable it to, to change the values for my uh, LED animation, it should work. What I need to do now is I need to solder ring one to the Arduino. Okay. Okay. So if you go back to my, my side shot here, this, I've got six lines coming out of this cup. These three lines are going to go to the left cup. These three lines are going to go to my Arduino. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to unwrap enough. these. I'm going to strip them and tin them. And while I'm stripping and tinning these, what are you working on, Brian? Well, so remember how mine was like a work in progress to start with and everything? Right. And I'll move this more into the camera. Um, I've got to double check my wiring because I had you had threaded it through here, through the nose bridge, down into the other um, right. to the and, other and LED. And you needed to move it because the version 2 is slightly different than version 1. Slightly different than version 1. And now I've gotten to the point where... Do I try and solder these wires together, or should I just start from the beginning and re-solder wires to the LED and then wrap them to the other one? Well, what's it going to be? I think I can... I don't know. These wires are pretty tiny, but I feel like I could solder them together. You don't think so? I, I, think, I think you can. I think you can. I just think, you know, it's, it's going to be difficult. It's cleaner. If you, you've got, you've, I've got a lot of excess wire there. That's true. Okay, I'll do that. I'm going to rewire them. <clears throat> right. No problem. So what I'm doing on my side is I'm... Oh, let's get this back into frame. Like so. I'm going and I'm uh, wiring up 
the five volts from the LED mm -hmm. to my Arduino. Because remember, ultimately, I'm going to pass power from the left side to ring two, ring one, and then to the Arduino. Right. And this is the wine. There we go. Uh, when you're doing this, just remember, don't put too much heat. If you start to smell the fiberboard, <laughs> uh, that's you could stop. What does fiberboard smell like? Um, Chicken? You'll know when you smell it. Yeah, right. <laughs> you go, oh, yeah, that's fiberboard. I should not be cooking that. Yeah, it's not for dinner. Yeah, okay. if it smells toxic, you know. And then I need ground. My ground is right there. <laughs> I'm going to do the same thing for over here. I'm going to have the... My helping hands. Helping hands are absolutely essential for a uh, any project, really. And yeah, there we go. Especially with some of these more um, intricate soldering pads that yeah. we have to have access to here. Especially when you're trying to do it on camera and the angle's all wrong. You know, am I the only one who actually likes the smell of solder? <laughs> <laughs> I think you probably have the association of... This is a project that I'm working on. I like projects because I don't think the actual smell is hotter. It's Thank you, Alex. Tempting. I know. See, Alex wants us to die. It's weird. <laughs> it smells delicious. All right. There you go. And actually, I, I may have bridged something here, so I'm going to use... Oh, look, Brian. What is oh, it? Oh, a magnifying glass. Oh, it really is coming in handy. And actually, I, wow, I did bridge that. I, how did I do that? Um... Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just snip the excess because I don't want any extra wire hanging out of the backside there. Mm -hmm. Even though it's going to be down in the tray, uh, might as well get rid of it now. All right. Okay. So I've got my uh, five volt lines, but now I need my signal line. Now this is defined inside of software, so it doesn't really matter where I put it, but I did set it for digital three, so I'm going to put it right there. There we go. I'm going to borrow your slag heap or slag remover. Is that what it's called? Oh, no. I, I call it the pit of despair. <laughs> you know, it's apt. Oh, absolutely. There we go. So let's see. Well, one thing about this 30 gauge wire is it actually fits perfectly into the uh, uh, little through holes on an Arduino mm -hmm. uh, Nano. Just so you know. I've always wondered. Have you noticed that there's still a chicken making sound in the background? Mm. Well, you know, it takes time to bake a chicken. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go ahead and clip off the excess here as well. Uh, it's a good practice once you, especially if you're you're doing through hole, go ahead and flip it over and make sure that all the wires ended up where you, you wanted them to be. So I've got ground, 5 volts, ground, 5 volts, my analog signal wire, and my digital signal wire. There we go. Okay. What do you got over there, Brian? Uh, I am rewiring. Tin I'm tinning a wire to help that, to give myself more wire uh, for connecting the Excuse two me, rings. Brian, together. can you tin that wire in the frame, please? Uh, oh, good point. That wire is already tinned, though. You can't quite tell. But, Thank you. Yeah, I was Brian. doing this. Okay, and then let me slag it off. Sl uh, slag it off? Slag it off. I don't know if you Is that want not to a soldering that. term? No, I don't I don't think so. But. You know it's pronounced solda somewhere else. Oh, don't start. Don't even start don't that argument. Start. Seriously, you the, the chat room will have an OCD attack if you do that. <laughs> I mean it makes sense. That and GIF and GIF oh, and yeah. sudo or, or sudo. Sudo? Why would you say sudo? Because it's technically super user do or substitute user do. Oh. Uh. All right. But I say sudo because when I was in college and the first time I started using Linux, you were making serious dough. No, I just <laughs> I remember the song of Phil Collins' "Studio." Su 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 yo. Okay, when you explain it with that story, it makes it much less legitimate. <laughs> right? Like, don't ever tell anyone that story again. <laughs> okay, so I've got my first ring up, and my my animation patterns are working. Cool. And there we go. Hold on, let's swap it. That that's my warp core one. Cool. Let's go back down to my rainbowy one. Uh, that's my fade to black. So this is working. So this. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but the problem is, if you look at the other side of the goggles, mm -hmm. they don't look real. Um, there's. Uh, yeah, what's going on there? There's, yeah, there's. What's that. the deal? That's not great. 
That's not great. Let's fix that. Yeah, we're going to fix that in just a second. But at least I know my code works. I know my Arduino works. But I want to help you, Brian, because I want to make I want to make you be at the same spot that I am at. <sighs> See, Padre, the only thing that's going to help me right now is time. I, which I, is I can not. I can do some... time. We'll see. Okay, so I'm adding more wire. So that you know what? Can... Give me your other one, and mm -hmm. I'll add wire to that. How would that help me? Well, because then you, you don't have to solder it. <gasps> you know what? Do the uh, the left three, and I'll do the bottom three of this one, and that should then right. Does that make sense? And then I can loop them together. Oh yeah, yeah. So you uh, so you want the wires that go from this to that one? Yeah. Do left to right, and I'll do right to left, and so I'll only do the three. On See, Brian, end. team effort. This is a team effort. That's what this show is here to teach leave, you. You leave no geek behind. <laughs> Unless they don't watch The Expanse. And then, and then you, you leave them behind. Nerd shame them. Well, it's not that I'm nerd shaming you. It's that mm -hmm. I'm, what? I'm saying you're dead to me. <laughs> oh, okay. As long okay. as it was nothing serious then. It just, I, I mean, look, I, I, I want to like you, but right. I just I have serious questions about your character if you haven't watched The Expanse. <laughs> I just don't know if I can trust you is what you're saying. Now, but you tell me I need to get into Westworld. Yeah, but you have a very good reason not to. You like to, well, I guess binge watch isn't necessarily oh, no, the that, word. I'm but definitely a binge watcher. You're a binger? Yeah. But, but here's the thing. I regret having given in and watched uh, Game, Game of, of Thrones. Thrones. I right. think it was, I mean, because I read the books. Mm -hmm. I, th I think it would have been so much better if I had waited until this entire series was done and then I could watch the entire narrative. That's what I like about series that have a, a beginning and an end. Yes. You know when it's over. It's not, you know, it doesn't keep going forever. If you try to do that with the books, though, you probably will never get an end, <laughs> but you might with the show. Um, what, what is it that uh, that uh, George R.R. R. Martin said? Every time you you ask me when the book is next book is going to be out, I kill a Stark. Someone you love dies. <laughs> yeah, whatever character you like dies. I said, oh, you like Arya? Oh, she's dead. Now. Interesting. She's dead. Um, In fact, I have it on good authority that, uh, uh, sorry, spoiler, Bran Stark was not supposed to die. But then someone at HBO pissed him off. But Bran Stark didn't die. <gasps> spoiler. Oh, spoiler. Sorry about that. No, Hold the door, Padre. <laughs> what did you say? Are you, uh, I'm just kidding. Do you, you imagine how much hate we would get? <laughs> if that were true. <laughs> oh, please don't be true. <laughs> <laughs> Padre predicted if it. If it's true, I'm in trouble. No, oh. Westworld, you could probably wait on Westworld. With Game of Thrones, though, they've been out for so many seasons, yeah. and yeah. it's diverted enough from the book that you might want to know before someone spoils something. Now, interesting, because before Game of Thrones started, I had read the books, mm -hmm. and then I watched the series. And I didn't really like the books, and I but I loved the series. I watched the series for Expanse before I read the books. And which and, do you prefer? And now that I've read the books... Um, Books are freaking awesome, but they're both pretty good. Uh, can you hand me the black? Yes. You like the way I bundle my wire? It's really high tech. It's super high tech. Yeah. I'm going to unbundle it for you. <laughs> no, no. So you, so you pull on it, yeah. and then you find out which, which, which loop it's closing, and then you pull it back. Pull it back. See? And then you disassemble the whole thing. Because otherwise, you end up with a big ball of wire, Brian. No, you're right. That doesn't help. That's smart. That helps nobody. But Except I do want to give you wire. more work since you're trying to help me. Oh, wow. <laughs> this is just, uh, this is kind of sad. Well, Brian, you know, what? we're going to get back to this in a bit. But uh, as long as we're riffing on our favorite shows, why don't we go ahead and take this moment to listen to this message. Previously on Twit. This is Robert's face. He had himself scanned. They made me a 3D model. Oh! So ah! That's creepy as hell. It is freaky, isn't it? Windows Weekly. Rich Turner's official title is Senior Program Manager at Microsoft, but he's best known for being Mr. Bash. I don't know how we managed to keep this thing under wraps, um, but there were very, very few <laughs> I'll leaks. I'll tell you how. Nobody could possibly believe <laughs> could that you were believe. doing it, even what? if they heard the rumor. They went, oh, that's insane. <laughs> The new screensavers. We're going to see Meta in a brand new augmented reality platform. You can do more with this than Microsoft's doing with the HoloLens. 90 degree field of view, so immersive that you don't really see the edges. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like virtual reality on top of the real that world. Twit. It's where your brain and tech meet. But you know what's interesting is when you first held that up, it felt like augmented reality of him, right? Oh, did it? Yeah. <laughs> and I have a small tooth, so they made me two of them. <laughs> <laughs> 
Right. Oh, and we're back. Hi. How about that? Okay, so in the uh, in the small break that we had there, Brian, you you got a lot of work done. You've got I your did. Uh, yeah. I perfectly soldered uh, new wires to the LED ring, and so now I've got all these connected. And not only that, but power for the battery. Fantastic. Um, although, what? Yeah. Nothing. Well, I'll, I'll I'll tell you later. What? I may have made a mistake there. No, no, no. no. What do you mean you made a mistake? Father? I mean, because you may, clearly you, I put these together. You may have made a mistake in during the break. connecting the power connector before it was threaded through the frame. Oh, oops. We yes, could, we could fix this. I made that we mistake. Could fix this. Actually, okay. I think I can get by without threading it through the frame. Maybe. I don't think so. No, <laughs> that's okay. No, no, we'll we'll fix it. But first, let's let's. Okay, so uh, what you want to do is you want to follow my template here. So, okay, you're gonna take the LED that is on the right cup. So it's gonna it's the cup that has the potentiometer. That's okay. the one that's gonna be soldered to the Arduino. Right. So you need to start threading through. The, uh, the rat hole. So in my case, I've got six wires coming out of the right cup. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have five wires out of the, the left cup. Okay. Okay. So uh, go ahead and start threading that. I'm, and then while you're doing that, I'm going to go ahead and set this up. I've got these three, but I don't just want to have it hanging across the nose of the goggles. That would be silly. It would look bad, mm -hmm. which is why we created these. These are bridge segments. And let me show you how it's going to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull real hard... No, on this, and it will disengage the bridge like so. Okay. Okay. And then what I'll do is I'll take this bridge segment, and it slips over that like so. And I can get two of these segments into that space. Uh, and this actually has a space for me to put the wires in behind it. Okay. Do yeah. you have extra or no or I these are the bridges those, those yeah. are the bridges for okay. you these are the bridges for me we're different colors brian right right got a color match yep yep so uh what i'm going to do is i'm first going to go ahead and and thread my wires through like so and i i made these symmetrical so it doesn't matter which side you you thread it through just just remember that you want to turn the wire side towards the back of the goggles okay and like so through there boom there we go and i need two of them the reason why we do two is because we didn't want one solid piece. Uh, right. That would be incredibly uncomfortable. Right. Uh, we already changed the design so it wouldn't cut into my nose. So I don't want to add a point of discomfort. That's just kind of silly. <laughs> uh, once I have that, I'm going to go ahead and take this and I'm going to thread it through both of those. Like this. It takes a little bit of doing. And one more, like Here we go. Oh, it's a tight fit. It is a tight fit. It takes, uh, but I mean, it, it, the problem is if it's too loose, it jangles, and I didn't want the jangly look. Is that the technical term? Yeah, jangly. <laughs> Jingle, jangle, jinger. Mister, Mister Bojangles. But see, now that's that's how it looks. See, so when I if, when it flexes, the two segments can move independently. Right. But otherwise, it kind of will match the uh, the style of the frames. Totally. Yeah. Cool. Okay, and then give it some more. This support. this is the hard part. Putting it back in this can be a bit of a pain. Uh, before you do that, make sure that your strap is unwound. You don't want to have to undo the strap because you you inverted it. Mm -hmm. Um, let me look at your goggles for a second. Here. Uh, so if you, I think if you go sideways, you can slide it in that way a little bit easier. Uh, I I yeah, but no, Brian, I don't want to do it the easy way. Okay, just saying. look look at me, man. Maybe I'm wrong. Do you think? Do you see anything about me that says the easy way? No, no, definitely not. Uh, actually, what I found is if you can get a corner in, you can use a pair of pliers and just pull the rest through. Okay. Like so. Ta da! Ta freaking da! There we go. So it's it's back in. Basically now magic. My goggles are assembled, and that space, the gap between the. Uh, between the individual segments and the frame, mm -hmm. that's going to be covered up when we put the, the 3D printed frame on top of it. Totally. Okay. So now what I need to do is I need to take the wires that I've threaded through my bridge segment, and they're going to go inside of the rat hole that I drilled on the right on the left cup. And mm -hmm. then, I'm, then I'm going to solder those. Oh my gosh, this is all tangled now. Uh, what, did I, what did I do? Hold on. 
<laughs> what kind of madness is this? This is on the wrong side. Silly goggles. Tricks are for kids. All right. Wait. No. 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 Bad. It's like talk, talking to your dog. No. <laughs> Tibbs. Tibbs. No. He's being good. He's, He's a good dog. Good. He's a good boy. So I guess should I cut the power connector? Uh, what I would do is actually desolder it. I would desolder it because it's easier to resolder than the the re shrink wrap. Or re oh, okay, you're right. You're right. <clears throat> so I've got those two wires. I need the signal wire, and like so. There we go. Ta-da! So if I pull it taut, now. That's what I get. My signal wires have been run. Why is this looped over on itself? <laughs> Seriously, I, how did I get mm. this mess? That crackling sound. There we go. Ta-da. This is what it looks like. So I've got my wires run. And what I want to do is pull these wires out through the cup. And these are going to be soldered to this ring. There's only three contacts left that I can connect to. Mm -hmm. And those are the three contacts that I'll be hooking up to this ring. Cool. Uh, before I solder it, though, I'm going to want to go through the ring holder. Right. Like so. This uh, is oh, did oh. you go through the ring holders? Like that? Yeah. Oh, you did? Okay. Just checking. I was like, wait, did I? Yeah. I, yeah, I didn't want you have to desolder it. The ring holder. Yeah, yeah. yeah that would I be bad. That. All right. So let me strip and then tin. You frightened me for a moment. I was like, maybe I didn't. I, I don't know these things. Probably. I mean, I'm looking right at it, but maybe I didn't. Hmm. Who knows? The okay. madman of sorts. Uh, oh, what do you mean of sorts? <laughs> I learned man, it period. from you. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and tin these three wires. I've, and remember, I pre-tinned my pads, so all I'll have to do is just, uh, once I get solder on these wires, I can just reflow it, and uh, they should... Make cool. a solid connection. So, uh, let's see. Why, when did you get your dog, by the way? My doge? About eight years ago now. You got him as a puppy, right? I got him. He was th three, four months old oh, when I got him. So he looked like cute. a little teddy bear. He was super corgi, cute. Corgi puppies are the cutest. They're like little footballs. <laughs> when he would run on the grass, you couldn't see his legs. So it just looked like a ball of fluff he's, floating. He's, he's like a, a imperial speeder. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, no, good dogs. Okay, what do you got? All right, so take a look at what I've got here, Padre. Right. I have threaded my uh, magnifying glass side, uh, battery, I guess power side, through the ring holder, through the rat hole. Now... I want these three wires to go back through the nose bridge. Correct. correct to the, to to the, the bridge other on, one. to the LED on the right, which is going to connect to the Arduino. Right. And from the other LED, I will come up through the rat hole, through the ring, and then solder to here. Precisely. Okay. All right. So that is your plan of attack, sir. Plan of attack. And while you attack that, I am going to attack this. And then before I do anything else, I'll, probably, I'll do the power to the right side. Okay. Correct. Have we said enough how difficult it is to solder when uh, you're this far away? No, nope, it's not difficult at all for me, especially when we have a break. <laughs> the magic break? The magic break. Uh -huh. Get things done. Well, how about this, Brian? Mm -hmm. uh, we're doing our steampunk, which yeah. is actually more cyberpunk. A while back, I had a chance to, to talk to some people who actually create this for a living. They, they do this style all the time. Why don't we take a magic trick back to Maker fair and look at what steampunk really looks like. If you've been to enough of these shows, you've probably seen cyberpunk. It's dark, it's gritty, and most of the time, it's beautiful. But what exactly makes cyberpunk and how do you make these beautiful pieces of costume? Well, I'm here with Trevor from Subverse Industries and he's going to tell us, well, what is steampunk, Trevor? Well, uh, steampunk is uh, sort of reimagining um, of modern art, technology, and culture, but through the lens of Victorian era aesthetic and 
culture. Steampunk is such a wonderful combination of, of as you said, that retro-futuristic. You laser guns with steam cannons and, and holsters made out of leather. That it, it, It's almost a style that people can't describe, but they know it the minute they see it. Right, yeah, that's the beautiful thing about steampunk is it's so collaborative and there's so many right ways to do it. Uh, if you are a tinkerer, you can make something that's steampunk and it's instantly recognizable as steampunk. Uh, you can come at it from the fashion angle, from all the literature, the, the novels out there. It's just such a robust world and, and yeah, it's, it's, it's an amazing collaboration. Okay, Trevor, I got to ask you about your collection behind you because everything behind us is handmade, designed by you and your team. And, and I have to say, I've seen some bad steampunk in my days. They made good attempts, but not quite there. How do you go about actually designing the holsters and the hats and all the accoutrements that, that make your style? Well, uh, uh I got to give credit to to my community. You know, it's it's really uh, I'm inspired by the people around me all the time. It's a lot of uh, beautiful characters. Uh, the whole the whole Bay Area, specifically steampunk community, is just vibrant and amazing. And uh, you know, it it starts there, and then I think about function and and form, and uh, throw in a little passion and love, and and we end up with some pretty awesome stuff. I think. Now, Brian, I, I really, really like those pieces, but they were ridiculously expensive. Like the hat I loved. Yeah, how much? It's like $800. You know what, though? Like after the time that you've put into this project to build these goggles and some of the, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm sure I'm sure well, people will pay it. Though. Well, I mean, that's the thing. I'm, I'm not saying that it's a, it's not a ripoff. Right. Those right. are all handmade. There, there's no assembly line for this. So that, I mean, you're, you're buying someone's labor of love. That's why it's a little pricey. It mm -hmm. is, it is. But, um... This you can do yourself, and what what is the total budget of this project? Like forty dollars. Forty dollars. Forty dollars total. And, and the most that, expensive thing will be the three D printer that you would need for the parts. Yeah, but you could always so buy those. we are kind of cheating because we're assuming that you have a three D printer already, and you're not having to buy one just for this project. But uh, you know, once you do have a three D printer, you're going to want to do stuff with it, and that's what we're teaching you. We're teaching you what you can do to make your three D printer work a little harder. Cool. Yeah, no, that was neat. Um, and if you ever are, a, a, you want to go to a maker fair or a renaissance fair. No. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. How, I'm sorry. How did you say that again? A renaissance. Oh, wow. That's, that's, how you, that's classy, Brian. You could show up with some steampunk stuff and uh, you'll definitely get attention. Well, Jason Howell is doing a thing for his... Um his oh, kids right. his daughter, and yeah. they've got a steampunk theme and so he goes hey padre do you have any like steampunk type stuff i'm like do i why jason do yes i, I do <laughs> uh here's here's something a little tricky that you're going to get to eventually when you start tightening the the little uh, lens holder here this ring is going to have a tendency to spin what i typically do is i take like one of my dull soldering tools mm -hmm. and i'll just put it against the edge here so that the ring can't turn Otherwise, you'll you'll turn it until the wires break off, and that's not good. Be bad. That, that would that would be bad. Okay. There we go. Uh, 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 uh. There we go. Okay. okay. So, if I did this properly, and yes, I of think course I you did. did. Yeah. Um, if I power this thing up now, using this battery, power should go from here into the left cup, into the right cup, into the Arduino, and then the Arduino should be able to push data from the Arduino to the right cup to the left cup. Let's see if it actually works, Brian. Yeah, the moment of truth. Okay, so powering it up. And, okay, blue smoke. Uh, okay, that didn't work. Oh, wait, oh, this battery's dead, sorry. Oh, oh, it gave me a little heart attack. <laughs> I think it's dead. Let's see what happens <laughs> if I do this. Hold on. Blue smoke never smelt so good. Blue smoke is your friend. Uh, I think I shorted something. No, I definitely shorted something. Either that or I'm having the same problem with this Arduino. You know what I probably should have done the first time I shorted this? I <laughs> should have just replaced it. Ah, uh, nah. But why that's, do that? that's silly, Brian. Okay, I probably should take a look at my connection again. While we're taking a look at this, let's go ahead and take a listen these messages. 
Here is a look at just a few of the stories we'll be watching in the week ahead. Lots of quarterly earnings reports this week, including Google, Amazon, PayPal, Sony, Intel, GoPro, and Microsoft. And speaking of Microsoft, this week on April 25th, the company will begin rolling out Windows 10 Creators Update to Windows Phone, but the company says that only a subset of Windows Phone handsets will get the update. And say goodbye to Google Hangouts as we know it. Google shut down Hangouts API back in January. But as of this week on April 25th, the company will shut off existing apps. And hoping to give us a shot of good Uber news, the ride hailing company plans to live stream its first Elevate VTOL Summit this week from April 25th through April 27th. So get ready for your flying car. That's a look at a few other things we'll be tracking in the coming week. Join Jason Howell and me on Tech News Today every week at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern here on twit.tv. And we're back. Okay, so this is the final phase of our project. Alex, if you go to my side shot, so I've got my rings properly integrated. You can see that uh, one of them is inside the glass and the other one is outside of it. And uh, as I adjust my potentiometer, I can change my animation patterns. Now, again, all we did was we went from the Arduino uh, into the LED1, into the LED2, and then over to the battery side. Now, what I'd like to do now before I start closing this thing up, I, I want to go ahead and uh, install this, this Arduino, into the cart. Remember, we're using a cart system to make it easy for us to to make any changes. And uh, super simple here. All I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of hot glue at the bottom of the of the cart and then put in this Arduino Nano. Now, if I, if I really wanted to remove it, I could redesign the cart so that it had a clip system that would use the uh, little mounting holes on the, the uh, bottom and the top of the Arduino Nano. But these things are so inexpensive, it just it really didn't make sense for me to do that. So I'm just going to put a little a volume of hot glue like so. Nothing hot glue can't fix. Hot glue fixes everything. It's like the force. Mm -hmm. And the, what do you call that? How many, how many midichlorians are in there? All of them, Brian. Mm -hmm. It's so midi. Chlorian. There we go. I'm going to let that cool off. And once that's done, that's not coming out. Uh, now, the nice thing about this setup is it's uh, versus version one. Version one was only held in there by some double-sided tape. And as the tape dried, it just sort of disintegrated this is not going to come out in fact that hot glue kind of melted my frame a little bit oh no <laughs> wow i didn't realize hot glue was that hot <laughs> <laughs> hot glue gets pretty hot. hot hot glue does get hot uh, and actually i can feel it through the board so yeah uh i think that hot glue was overheated over. how are you doing brian all right maybe I'll, I'll pass over my goggles to you and you can tell me if i've done this correctly okay let's let's see so you've got your wires going through your uh your your bridge, you go. You've got it going in. Yep. Uh, although you've got a short right now. Oh, because one of the I can fix that, <laughs> okay. right? You can. <laughs> like if you plug this in right now, smoke. Smoke. Okay. Uh, see, you see the the pad that says ground, and then the pad that says VCC. Don't have uh, those. They shouldn't be touching. Right. That's, okay. That's that's okay. Easy that's but that's to good fix. to know. Okay. Yeah. Good. And then all you need on this side is this has to solder into the Arduino. This goes into ground, 5 volt, and uh, pin 3. Okay. And how does the potentiometer hook in? A potentiometer hooks into ground, 5 volts, and then analog 7. Okay. Okay. Yeah. There you go. That's Thank for you. Thank you. Okay. And now, uh, folks, unfortunately, we're, we're getting close to the end. So, of course, uh, now that mine is integrated, I what I would typically do is I would put a little bit of hot glue on the frame just to hold everything in place. But uh, this, of course... Is what the finished version will nice. look like. This is this is what you're you're making. If you followed us in our little let's solder, uh, this is our completed steampunk slash cyberpunk slash know how punk goggles. Well, mine are pretty close, Padre. I'm <laughs> almost there. <laughs> Actually, you know what? That's a good look. Yeah, it's almost like what you're wearing right now. <laughs> Uh, Brian, I know this is a lot of information from them. If they wanted to get our show notes, including the code for our Arduinos and the STL files for our 3D printed files, where do they go? Oh, where they go? Keep them on, man. They look good. I will keep them. <laughs> all right. You can find them at twit.tv slash KH. And yeah, all the links for the, the parts that Padre used, the STL files or the download um, to be able to print these parts and everything else will be there. And uh 
considering this is a multi-part episode, you're going to want to download and subscribe. Yes. And also don't forget that you can find us on the socials. Um, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that because we built this with a cart system, this is going to become a trend on know-how where you're going to take the designs that we created to be modular and you're going to design your own little pieces. I, I want to see brightness potentiometers. I, I want to see maybe if someone has a different way to design this, I, I want to see if perhaps someone wants to replace the magnifying loop with something that's driven by a server motor that was mentioned in the chat room. Now, the best place to express all of these things and show us pictures of your builds, maybe your code, is to go to our Google Plus group. Just go to, to uh, Google Plus and look for know-how. There's a very short approval process to keep out the spammers, but once you're in, you'll have access to our 11,000 plus Kitas. That's our know-it-alls who can help you with your project, maybe give you some answers. Maybe you can give them some answers. And of course, give us your questions. You can just, if you finish the project at all, you can post <laughs> pictures because I doubt that does look, look fantastic, like by the way. I really do like that. <laughs> so again, go to Google Plus and uh, look for know-how. But if you want to find out when I do eventually finish this project, which I am determined to do. You'll do it. I'll be posting it on Twitter, where you can find me at cranky underscore hippo. And you're going to find me at Padre Estre. And you're going to find the third member of our crew. He's known as DJ Jazzy. DJ uh, Grandmaster Jazz. Flasher. Grand. Grand He's known as Grandmaster Flasher. You can find him at twitter.com slash a Excuse me, Padre, that's pronounced Grandmaster Alex. Oh. oh. And I've improved my chicken rotisserie this week uh, following your instructions. We now can do hundreds of chickens <laughs> all at the same time. <laughs> Multitasking. That's so what you're smelling and all that sizzling. That's what's going on behind me right now. Oh, this is fantastic. a live shot of behind the control desk <laughs> as I'm roasting hundreds and hundreds of chickens. You know, that would, I actually, I would love a rotisserie like that? chicken thing. That many? It. Yeah. It's as fascinating. So just come on over here after the show. We've got plenty to go around. <laughs> mm, <laughs> smells good. Folks, next week we've got Patrick Delahanty. He's going to be giving us a special two-parter on cosplay. If you want to learn how to make things like steampunk beyond just the goggles, yeah. you're going to want to pay attention. Again, that's uh, next week here, Thursday at uh, what, 11 o'clock a.m. Oh, yeah, that's it. At, at twit.tv somewhere. Yeah. Slash Un live. Until next time, I am Father Robert Palliser. <laughs> And I'm Brian Burnett. <laughs> now that you know how, go build it. <laughs> or don't finish building it. Uh, I'm a mess. <laughs> I am a mess. Oh, those chickens are making me hungry. I know. I had dinner yet. <laughs> <laughs>